If you've ever tried to make Chinese takeout egg drop soup at home and been disappointed in the result, this video is for you. Today I'm going to show you how to make three different versions. A super easy takeout style that's ready in less than 10 minutes, a slightly more refined version with an aromatic infused broth, and finally, for the purists, we'll go over how to make everything from scratch. Now, at its most basic, egg drop is a soup in which a thin stream of beaten eggs has been poured into a lightly simmering pot of seasoned broth. If done correctly, the technique produces delicate, wispy, cloud-like ribbons of egg that resemble the strands of flowers, which is why it's sometimes called egg flower soup. In the West, because it's often included as an appetizer or as part of a combo meal, almost as an afterthought, I don't feel like this iconic soup gets the respect it deserves. If you make it properly, it's not only delicious, highly filling, and nutritious, but it's also ridiculously inexpensive, and you can feed an entire family for just a couple of bucks. For the broth, most takeout places use a chicken bouillon base that has been reconstituted with water to make a basic chicken broth. The one I've seen most often is Li Kum Ki. And this is the one I recommend using because it has the cleanest chicken flavor. You'll find two different versions, a green premium without MSG and a red one with MSG, and it doesn't really matter which one you get, but I think the red one is more commonly used in takeout kitchens. I've also seen Nor granulated chicken bouillon being used quite often, but you want to make sure you get the one that doesn't have dehydrated parsley in it. It doesn't affect the flavor that much, but the cubes you'll find at most western grocery stores have little unsightly bits of parsley that you never really see in egg drop soup. So always spring for the version without parsley, if possible. If you can't find either one of these, just use whatever is available. There are tons of great chicken bouillon bases on the market. And if you're vegetarian or vegan, you can use something like this mushroom bouillon base. To start the soup, we'll heat one liter of water in a small to medium pot. And when it's lightly simmering, we'll toss in the appropriate amount of chicken bouillon. Stir to dissolve, lower the heat, and give it a taste. It's pretty bland, right? So we'll need to further season it. The most common spices and seasonings I've seen across almost every kitchen I've visited and every recipe I've ever made are salt, white pepper, MSG, toasted sesame oil, and sugar. And I know I constantly harp on this in my videos, but the sugar is not going to make the soup taste sweet. Sugar is often used in Western-style Chinese dishes to round out the salinity of all the other seasonings. Now, I'm going to give you the precise amounts that worked for me, but you'll need to experiment with the ratio of seasoning and find what works best for you. So to our heated broth, let's add one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper, one teaspoon of MSG, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, and two to three drops of toasted sesame oil. And you want to be very careful with the sesame oil because it has a tendency to quickly overpower all other flavors if you add too much, so be very sparing with it. Then give your broth a taste and adjust the seasoning. Another characteristic of egg drop soup is that the broth is not watery. It has some body to it, some viscosity. It's not like gravy, but well-made versions coat the tongue nicely. And the way to achieve this effect is with a starch thickener. You can theoretically theoretically use most starches or flours, but I've personally only ever witnessed cornstarch being used by way of a slurry. And to make it, it's ridiculously simple. So let's add two tablespoons of cornstarch to a small bowl, then toss in two tablespoons of cold water and give it a stir. It'll most likely be kind of difficult to stir it at first because it's a non-Newtonian fluid, but just keep at it for a few seconds until it turns into a liquid. Then bring the seasoned broth up to a simmer, and before adding the slurry, give it another stir to make sure it hasn't settled, then slowly drizzle it into the broth. And you always want to stir the liquid you're adding a cornstarch slurry into because it can clump up if it's not moving. Then just let it simmer for a couple of minutes. Cornstarch needs a bit of time to work its magic, so don't kill the heat immediately. And this is what you're looking for. Not super thick, but our broth now has a bit of body to it. Now let's lower the heat and deal with the eggs. I've got two here, but you can use whatever amount feels right to you. Essentially, you want to beat the eggs until they're homogenous and you can't see any whites in them. And I always like to add a splash of water because it not only lightens the eggs, but makes them easier to pour in a very thin stream. Now bring the broth back up to a light simmer. Note, you don't want it to be boiling as it will curdle the eggs too quickly and make them way too tough. Then give the broth a gentle stir, moving in one direction. In a very fine stream, slowly pour the eggs into the broth. And the reason why we move in one direction is that when the eggs hit the broth, it will create longer and more delicate strands. And you want to be soft with your stirring. If you stir too vigorously, it will break up the eggs too finely and cloud the soup. And when you've added all the eggs, you want to let them lightly simmer for a minute or two to ensure they're thoroughly cooked. Then give it a taste and adjust the seasoning. 
toss in some sliced green onion to finish and stir them in. And this is a basic takeout version. Now, I know some of you are thinking, the color seems off. Why isn't this as yellow as the one I get from my local takeout place? Well, we can achieve this effect in a couple of ways. The most common method is to add a bit of turmeric when we added all the spices earlier. Turmeric doesn't really have that much flavor and is typically used to color dishes, so that's the first way. And this is what the soup looks like when it's been colored with turmeric. The second way, and it's not something I've personally ever witnessed, but I've heard some places do it, is to add yellow food dye. And you'll just add a few drops right before you stream in the egg. As far as I can tell, it only affects the color and not the flavor in any meaningful way. And this is the method that'll give you that 1980s Glengarry Glen Ross coffee is for closers neon yellow look. And this is what the food dye version looks like. If you want to add some vegetables, all you'll do is toss them in before the seasoning and the cornstarch and simmer them until they're done. Then continue with the steps outlined above. The most common vegetable I've seen is corn, and it seems like most of the takeout places near me include one or two rogue corn kernels with each serving of their egg drop soup, but you can add whatever you like. For a slightly more elevated takeout version, we'll follow the exact same method outlined above, but with one key difference. We're going to infuse our broth with aromatics, and this is going to perfume our soup with a clean, crisp freshness that is often lacking in the basic takeout version. It really awakens all the flavors. The effect is subtle but noticeable, but I promise it's worth trying. Today we're going to use ginger and green onion, but you can use any aromatic you typically add to a broth or stock. Onion, carrot, celery, shallot, leek, garlic, whatever you want. So let's start again with one liter plus one tablespoon of water and bring it up to a light simmer. The extra tablespoon is to account for evaporation. Then take a small handful of sliced ginger and lightly pound on it with the back of your knife. This will rupture the ginger on a cellular level and release even more of its aromatic flavor into the broth. Then toss it in the water with a few green onion bottoms. Lower the heat until it's just under a simmer and leave it alone for about 30 to 45 minutes. This is going to infuse the scallion and ginger flavor into our water and give it a nice, bright, fresh flavor. And I would advise against using ginger powder because it makes the soup spicy in an unpleasant way, in my opinion. After the time is up, let's fish everything out and proceed as we did with the first version. Add the chicken bouillon and season the water with the exact same spices. Thicken the soup with the cornstarch slurry and add the egg exactly as we outlined previously. And all of the instructions for each version are included in the recipe document in the video description. And you know what would be perfect with a slightly elevated egg drop soup? Some crispy wonton strips. We used to have these when I was a kid and they're a perfect topping for takeout style egg drop soup and they're super simple to make at home. You can use wonton or egg roll skins. You'll typically find two different types of wonton wrappers, square and round, and they're both used to make a variety of Chinese dumplings. Today I'm gonna to use my leftover egg roll skins from the previous video, but you can use either. And you'll find both wonton skins and egg roll wrappers in the refrigerated section of most Asian grocery stores. You can also find pre-made wonton strips in the salad section of most Western grocery stores, and they work well too. But to make them at home, you'll just heat up some oil to 360 degrees. Then cut each wonton wrapper into roughly half inch slices. Then add them to the oil and fry them until they're just under the shade of doneness you're looking for. You always want to take them out of the oil when they're slightly lighter than the shade you want because they'll continue cooking for a minute or two. Drain them on some paper towels and hit them with a bit of salt. And this is it. Super easy and a perfect garnish for our elevated takeout version. Now, if you're feeling a bit extra and you want to do everything from scratch and make a more gourmet version, I would recommend making a simple Chinese chicken stock. And it's not that difficult to make. Here I've got three chicken carcasses, but you can use whatever cut of chicken you want, including leftover rotisserie chicken bodies. If you're starting with raw chicken, we'll need to blanch it first. This process tightens the protein in the chicken and forces out some of the impurities that will cloud our stock and impart a minerally taste. Essentially, this is used for the clarification of the final broth, but it will also help us create a lighter, fresher final product. So let's bring a pot of water up to a simmer and drop in our chicken. Simmer for about two minutes and then drain the chicken in a colander. After it's cooled down a bit and you can handle it, wash the chicken under cold water. This will help us remove any of the scum or impurities that might have clung to the chicken. Then wash out the pot and make sure it's clean. All these steps are going to help us create a light, clean, clear broth. Then add the chicken back to the pot and cover it with cold water. Toss in a small handful of ginger and scallion bottoms and bring it up to a light simmer. Lower the heat until you see bubbles lazily pop up here and there, just barely breaking the surface. It should look like this. And then just keep it at this heat for at least two hours, or really for however long you want. I once fell asleep, or passed out if I'm being honest with you, while making Chinese chicken stock, and it went on for 12 hours. And it was the best one I ever made. So, you do you. And after it's done, you'll just strain it as you would any other stock or broth, and it's ready to use. 
And you may have to scrape the fat off the top if it materializes, but I use chicken carcasses, so that's almost never an issue for me. After the stock is cooled down, you can keep it in the fridge for about 2-3 to three days, or you can freeze it for about 6 months. To make a gourmet version of egg drop, what I like to do is keep the seasoning as simple as possible. I typically only use salt and white pepper, sometimes I'll add MSG if it feels like it needs it, but I generally try to keep the seasoning uncluttered. So let's heat up 1 liter plus 1 tablespoon of our homemade broth and toss in some ginger and scallions as we did in the last version. You don't need to simmer, but let's steep the aromatics in the hot broth for about 30 to 45 minutes. Then fish them out and adjust the seasoning with some salt and white pepper. And when you've got it how you like it, add the cornstarch slurry to thicken the broth. Now we're ready for our eggs, but here's where we're going to take a detour from how we've been doing things. My buddy Jotten, who claims to have eaten egg drop soup in 22 different countries and is a self-described egg drop connoisseur, actually separates the yolks and whites in his version. And what this does is create different textures in the egg, and it also helps naturally color the soup without using any other spice or anything artificial. In my research for this video, I also saw CC Lee doing the exact same thing, so I wanted to give a shout out to her. She has an awesome channel, and you should definitely check it out. When you've got your yolks and whites separated, all you'll do is add a splash of water to each of them, and this is going to help us pour in a thinner stream than if we had just left them alone. Then lightly beat both the yolks and the whites, but be careful with the whites because if you beat too much air into them, they will foam up when you add them to the soup. Then just slowly drizzle both the yolks and the whites into the broth while gently stirring as we've done with the previous two versions. And this is what the everything from scratch version looks like. You can clearly see there are both egg yolks and egg whites in the soup and the textural difference is quite nice. And the very last thing I like to do for a more gourmet version is to lightly season the soup with Chinese black vinegar. This style of vinegar has many different names, none of which I'm going to attempt to pronounce lest I get trolled in the comment section, but they're all slightly different from one another, so you'll just have to find one you like. This is the one I use. It has a mildly acidic, almost fruity, and moderately sweet taste. Vinegar is often used to season foods in Chinese cuisine, and just a tiny splash will add some extra complexity and depth to our soup. It's not mandatory, but I highly suggest trying it out because it works well. Now, let's give our takeout style egg drop soup a taste test and see how we did. The great thing about egg drop soup is that it's infinitely customizable. You can toss in any vegetable or protein and it's going to be great. And you can use this egg pouring technique in any other soup to fortify it and turn it into an entire meal all on its own. And I just wanted to confirm, yes, an egg did indeed drop this soup. But if you'd like to learn how to make Chinese takeout egg rolls at home, be sure to check out this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.